Hey y'all, welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we are making spicy Korean kimchi fries, a nod to one of my very favorite Austin, Texas restaurants. Spicy Korean pork kimchi fries. You guys, this is a delicious recipe and it's a nod to one of my favorite Austin restaurants which I'll kind of explain to you guys as we go along here today. But first, we've got our marinated pork here, but let's show you how we got the marinated pork. So the marinade. Now, excuse my shirt, I spilled water guys. <laughs> and we're casual today, so I'm not gonna change my clothes. I'm gonna do the marinade for the pork for our kimchi fries. Now this is super easy, y'all, it's just crazy easy. So, get yourself a baggie. This is a piece of pork steak that I got from our local market. It still has the bone in and it's fairly well marbled. Now, this is totally up to you guys what cut of pork you choose to use. I kinda like it to have a little fat because I feel like that really lends to the flavor but Jimmy doesn't care for that. So I feel like this is the kind of the best of the both worlds. So, and it was on sale. <laughs> Just get what's ever on sale, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna take my piece of pork, I'm gonna drop it in here, lay it flat to start, wash my hands. Okay, we got our pork in here, kind of flat. Now I've got all my ingredients here in front of me. I'm gonna go through here real quick and let you guys know what we're gonna be using. These are all in the Asian ingredients video that I did. So none of this is new or weird. First, we've got brown sugar. Use brown sugar. Garlic, I cheated. I used the already minced garlic. I didn't do fresh garlic cloves. Honestly, it's easier. And for a marinade, it just makes more sense. We have some sesame oil, soy sauce, gochujang. Now, or red pepper paste, however you wanna say it. I'm gonna put all of it together here and just whisk it up. So we're just literally gonna dump. Sugar first. Put in my garlic. This is so good, y'all. I tested and tested and tested this recipe. And this, I feel like, was the best. I didn't want a syrupy, sweet kind of bulgogi for this. I wanted something a little more, I don't know, neutral? Might be a good word. And gochujang. This is so messy. It is a true paste. When you work with gochujang, it is a paste. That's why you need your whisk because that's the only way it's really gonna break down. The salt and the soy sauce will help you with that. But that's why you need your spatula and a little tiny baby whisk. Okay, I'm just gonna mix. Really what I'm looking for is that paste to be completely dissolved. Scrape your edges. It's a flavor you don't want to miss out on right there. Almost there, oh man. That sesame oil, that's why I'm in love with it. It gives such a good rich smell and flavor to your food. All right, I think we're good here. I don't have big chunks or anything. All right, so now we're just gonna dump this in to our baggie. I try to be conscientious of like save the planet, but a plastic baggie for me just does better with some of this. So that's what I use. Shake, shake, shake. All right. Seal it up. You don't want a lot of air in there, so try to get as much air out as you can. Make sure it's good and tight. Now just shake it around. Massage the meat a little. Now, I like to marinate this overnight. Flat. You can put it on a plate. You can put it in a small, like, sheet, like a sheet pan. All right, there we go. Now, before you go to bed, flip it. Mess with it, just like I just did. Massage the meat, pin, you know, mess with it and flip it a couple times. 
but make sure and put it back in there until the morning. Now, I tend to do this the afternoon of the day before. So it has the afternoon. If I think about it, I'll come mess with it. And then right before I go to bed, I'll mess with it again, get up in the morning, mess with it again, and then cook it that afternoon. So it really, it tenderizes your meat, your soy sauce, and it gives it such a delicious flavor. So into the refrigerator, this is going to go. We'll see you guys tomorrow for the rest of the recipe. All right, so now our pork has been in the fridge overnight. We've tossed it around, like I said there. So I'm just gonna take a plate and I'm just gonna put my pork on this plate and we're gonna set it aside. Because the first thing we're gonna do is actually prep some of our ingredients and some of like the toppers and the goodness. So we're just gonna take this out because we don't necessarily want it to keep sitting in here. See if I can do this without getting it all over me. What do you guys think? There we go. Ooh, it's nice and tender, it's starting to come apart even. Ooh, yeah, that smell though. All right, so wash my hands real quick. Alrighty, so we're just gonna take this and set it aside because we're not gonna work with it right now. This is a really incredibly easy recipe. It just has some steps and some layers. So I'm hoping I can make this easy for you guys. Now let's first go over our ingredients and then we'll start prepping. These are not complicated ingredients. They're really easy to find. The, the most complicated thing I think would be kimchi, but you can find that at any Asian market. So if you have one nearby you, and they actually sell them at some regular grocery stores now. So it really just kind of depends. Let's start with cheese. We have some shredded, just regular cheddar cheese. We've got some toasted sesame seeds here. Our kimchi, Japanese mayo, and sriracha. Let's talk about the mayo. Now, this is the QP mayo that we talked about in my Asian ingredients video. So it comes in this bag and when you open it, it looks like this. <laughs> There's no label, I don't quite know why. You can see it, the little baby here is on the bottle, but there's no label, but trust me, it's QP mayo. I'm practicing what I preach. Let's start with our sriracha mayo. Now this is so much simpler than you guys would have ever realized in your entire life. It's literally equal parts Japanese mayo to sriracha sauce. If you want it a bit spicy, if you want it a little more tame, just add more mayo and you're good to go. So I do equal parts because I like it to be a bit more spicy. So we're gonna do just a couple of tablespoons here. I'm using a little baby one just simply because I need to use it up in my refrigerator. Let's see. Bit at me. This one. I do heaping tablespoons of mayonnaise because I'm a mayonnaise fan. So that's why mine seem a little bigger. It's my finger, clean that off. My hands are clean, I promise. Let's do the other one. Alrighty, and we're just gonna do our sriracha the same way. I never knew this was that simple. I always thought there had to be something more to a good sriracha mayo, but it's really not. It's just equal parts. You can get crazy with it. You can add sesame oil if you want to. I've seen some people add paprika and some of that, but I'm a purist about it. I just do it this way. Take your baby whisk and just whisk it up. And it starts to turn the color that you would expect it to turn here. All right, there we go. Sriracha mayo, done. Let's chop some veggies. So I've got an entire bunch of green onions here. I'm gonna use these just to kind of top off our fries. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of cut the tops off of these. I've washed them, but you all know that onions can be kind of dirty. So we're going to just chop these up into a nice sort of, not necessarily too fine, when I'm a little rough. I always cut off this green part in the back. This may be a good opportunity to tell you guys kind of how I came across this particular company. Now, what's funny about this is, you guys may or may not know, I planned weddings professionally for about six years when I lived in Austin. And they often had events when I was there to promote different things, to make different you know, food trucks, food trucks and companies and catering stuff sort of known to people like us who planned weddings and helped their clients find what they wanted. I attended an event at a new venue and they had cilantro there and they were serving 
these kimchi fries. And I thought, how genius is something like that? I had never seen anything like that before. It's kind of like a Mexican Korean fusion restaurant. And I thought it was just the coolest thing. So I actually started working with them. They, they had their food truck that they would actually take to weddings, which was really neat and fun for guests to be able to go like during a cocktail hour or something like that and be able to go to the actual food truck and get their appetizers. In fact, two really good friends of mine, did, I did their wedding, that's how I met them and we became really good friends, and they worked with Chilantro for their, for their event too. The sad thing is, is I actually don't live in Austin anymore. And so I'm not able to get my hands on this nearly as much as I did before. I was so excited to see them go from like food truck to brick and mortar. And since then they've gotten tons of new locations and they were even on Shark Tank, which is awesome. So it's fun to kind of see a company that you worked with for a while to help people with their weddings become so successful and to grow. And so I thought this would be a really fun recipe to share with you guys because who doesn't love kimchi and french fries? All right, we've got our onions set aside here. I'm gonna grab my cilantro. Now, I am not super picky about the stems on cilantro. Why? Because you get a lot of flavor from those stems. So I just kind of take it, sort of roll it up like this. Have a little extra, I don't need that much. Roll it up like this, best you can, and then just give it a good rough chop. Now, one thing I wanna make you guys aware of is this is not the actual recipe for these kimchi fries. I have actually never gotten my hands on it. It's a super secret recipe from what I know. And this is purely just from memory. I have eaten this enough to where I kinda think I know that I've got it, but this is a pure nod <laughs> it's a really delicious, interesting fusion dish that I thought you guys would love. So, uh, like I said, this isn't their exact recipe, but I think I got it pretty close. I may have my own little spins on it, but hopefully you guys will try it and like it. And if you're ever in Austin, you'll go by and see them. You're probably wondering why am I using such a tiny knife? Honestly, this is my favorite knife. I have no reason. I just like this one. <laughs> So that's why I'm using it. Um, and typically with, with these kinds of things, I find it easier for me to chop them than with this huge gargantuous knife. So it's just preference, y'all. All right, let's drop our cilantro in here. I probably chopped more than I need, but that's okay. I happen to like cilantro. I know that there are some of you out there that don't enjoy cilantro that think it tastes like soap. Uh, because I have friends and family who feel that way. So if you don't like cilantro, then I would suggest using maybe parsley, if you like parsley, for this. But I think cilantro really adds a fantastic flavor, so it's really totally up to you. Alrighty, now let's grab our kimchi. So we're gonna do about a cup of kimchi. I would do this, more of this, if I was cooking just for myself, but uh, other members of our family don't love kimchi as much as Jimmy and, Jimmy's dad and me. So, I'm just gonna do about a cup. Now we're actually gonna cut this into smaller pieces. Do you see it's in kind of big chunks here? So, and most kimchi is like this. If you buy it this way, I don't make my own kimchi. I am not that good or that patient. So I just buy mine at my local Asian market. For those of you who don't know what kimchi is, kimchi is a fermented cabbage. They also have this made out of like chives and cucumbers, radishes. They have a lot of different kinds of kimchi, but basically what it is, is it's the red pepper flakes that I showed you guys in my video with all the Asian ingredients. It's that, it's salt and sesame oil and just the most deliciousness. You want a bit of that liquid in the bottom, but it's just fermented for a long period of time. So the longer it stays in your fridge, the better it gets. So that's all it is. This is the Napa cabbage one just because it's more traditional. We're just gonna give this a rough chop, y'all. Take it, dump it out, and I'm just gonna put it right back into this container. This is totally up to you guys how you wanna cut this, but I like them in kind of strips. I cut it one way this direction. Kind of looks like a massacre, doesn't it? And then kind of turn it, do it this way. Kimchi is a pretty acquired taste, I will say. Not everybody loves kimchi. 
I happen to think it's fantastic, but I think it's really, it's up to y'all. Give it a try. Go, if you can go to a Korean restaurant, give it a good, good taste. They always serve it next to anything. It's really, really good. So I'm one of those kind of people though, that like I'll eat this with just chopsticks straight out of the container. Grosses Jimmy out, but I just love it. His dad will actually do the same thing. He spent time in Korea when he was in the military, so he gets it. We've got all of our toppings and goodness prepared. Now let's talk about your fries. Now I'm using actual potatoes. You could buy the frozen French fries if that's what you wanted to do. Throw them in your oven, throw them in some oil and fry them up, or throw them in an air fryer. I personally like it this way, just because we're obsessed with our air fryer. We bought this on Amazon for less than $75, and it's, in Jimmy's words, a real workhorse. Like, it's been really good. It's so good, in fact, we bought two of them. <laughs> so we can have them going at the same time. So all we've done here is we've just taken two russet potatoes and we've cut them into fries and soaked them for an hour. Now, you want to do this because what that does is it pulls a lot of that starch out of them and it'll make them crispier faster when you put them in the air fryer. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna drain the water and then we're gonna get ready to put them in the air fryer. I always preheat my air fryer because it's it just, you want that sizzle when you put things on inside of it. So take out my drawer here. It's gonna be hot. Now I have some spray. You are not supposed to put spray from these kinds of bottles in an air fryer. Why am I doing it? Because this is literally just the oil, so it's safe for me to do that. You don't, under any circumstances, wanna put Pam or any other kind of cooking spray in one of your air fryers. Only do it if it's just oil. There's no other additives or ingredients or anything like that in it. This is actually a sesame oil one, so I'm just gonna spray. And this is just so it doesn't stick. Okay, so we're good there. We're gonna take our potatoes and just dump them in. You really don't need to do anything else but drain them. You could probably pat them dry if you wanted to, but I don't know how important that is. You don't wanna dump the water, so if you have any residual water in the bottom, use your hands. See, I've got some water, so. Okay, put those in there. And then just spread them out. And then what I do, just for fun, is spray the top. Now, you're gonna shake them <laughs> as they cook, but this will kind of start them to brown. So just gonna shake it up. All right. air fryer is set on 400 degrees and it's gonna go for 15 minutes hopefully you guys can still hear me okay I'm gonna do this even though my air fryer is running just because it will save us some time for us to get this all done for you so I'm gonna take my piece of pork and I'm just gonna cut it into bite-sized pieces now this is a pork shoulder steak so it does have a little bit of a bone in it so I'm just gonna start right here and I'm just gonna cut that bone out Try to find the end of your bone here, and then you can just cut it. Now from here, I'm just gonna cut it in small pieces, little bite-sized cubes, because that's easier to get on top of your kimchi fries, so. This doesn't have to be super exact. This smells amazing, by the way. Oh my gosh. Uh, just gonna put it right back in this little bowl. I'm not gonna waste dishes around here. I'm using this particular cut of pork because I like that it has a little fat on it. That fat renders a lot of flavor in addition to what you've already marinated it in. So that's why I like this cut. If you want a different cut of pork, by all means, go for it. You can make these pieces as big or as small as you want them to be. You can also cook this on the grill. I tested it that way because I wasn't sure which way I would like this better. And it works really well on the grill too. So if any of you are big grillers, give it a shot that way too. I'm gonna share with you guys a little bit of the art of the air fryer. I have one dirty hand and one clean hand. So we're gonna multitask. Now, every five minutes or so, you wanna take it and you wanna shake it. So pull it out. You'll start to see them get brown. Shake it like that, kind of toss them. Put them right back in there. Cool. 
Now, if you need to add time to your air fryer, it's super, super easy if they're not as crispy as you want them. That's where preference kind of comes into play a little bit. We have it a little full, so I will probably end up adding another five minutes or so to it to let it end up going for about 20. That also gives me time to cook this pork once I get it all chopped up, so. It'll work out just perfect, I think. We're gonna put our burner on about medium-high heat. Okay, that starts to warm up, and we're gonna dump all of our pork in our pan. Turn down just a little bit. Ooh, smells good. Now we just wanna toss this around until it's good and cooked through. You don't want to cook it too long to where it's dry. But because we cut them in these little pieces, you're not gonna have to cook it as long. They'll cook faster. It will render some juices, but that's all right. You want that. But those juices are gonna be so flavorful and delicious from the marinade that it was in overnight. So that's okay. You don't necessarily want it to cook all that off either. So we're good here. We're just gonna let it keep going until it's all cooked through. You don't want it to be too tough because then it's gonna be hard to chew it. You don't want it just done. Getting a beautiful crust on it. Oh my gosh. Mm, this is gonna be good. Alrighty, our pork is done. We're just gonna take it and put it in our bowl here. It did render some fat, so I'm not gonna scrape that into my bowl. We're just gonna do the actual pork itself. Pork is done and beautiful. So we're gonna put it right there. And now, here's the real secret. They caramelize the kimchi. Genius. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn our trusty thing on here, trusty burner, on about a medium low. That's a total of about 20, 25 minutes for this, just because we had it a little full. So. That's all right though. So we're gonna put our kimchi here in our pan. You don't need any oil in here because it's got the juices already, so that'll keep it from sticking to your pan. You want those juices to cook off and this to start to caramelize. Let me turn my heat up a bit. Like I said, y'all, this is not a difficult recipe. It's really simple. It just has lots of steps. You can decide how caramelized you want this to be complete preference here, you guys. I like mine to have a little bit of good caramelization on it, so I let mine go a little longer. Our fries are looking pretty good. They've got about three minutes left on them, so we're gonna take them out when they beep and they're done. My kimchi has had all of the liquid cook out of it, and now it's starting to kind of get caramely and yummy. So we're gonna let this go a couple more minutes itself. Our kimchi's good. It's nice and warm. It's not super crusty and caramelizy, but it's got that that good look. So we're gonna put it in our bowl here, let our fries finish, and we will put it all together. All right, our fries are done. Ooh. Just gonna take these out. You can, if you would like to, sprinkle a bit of salt on them when they're still hot. I don't, just because I, I get enough salt from the kimchi fries. So that's completely up to you. Now we're gonna assemble. The first thing to do is to sprinkle some cheese on top here because that cheese will start to melt because your fries are still hot. So sprinkle your shredded cheddar. What you'll see on the recipe for this, you guys, is your toppings are purely based on taste. How much you want, completely up to you guys. Now we're gonna do our kimchi. So we're just gonna take and we're just gonna spread our kimchi out all over our fries. And because I'm doing one big platter, you guys, I'm just gonna do all of it. If I was making separate plates, I would just split this up. This really feeds two people for like a dinner. But if you wanted to double or triple it, you could obviously cook it for quite a few more. Any salty bite you get from this kimchi will go into your fries, which is why I think the second step is a good one to go ahead and put your kimchi on here. Next, we've got our pork. Our pork came out so good. Got a beautiful little caramelization on it. The flavor's really good. It's sweet, it's not spicy. I put a little bit of gochujang in it that you saw, but it doesn't come through as too hot. You're gonna get a good kick from your spicy mayo, so you don't wanna make this too overpowering. For everybody else, you're also not gonna use this entire bit of pork. You'll probably have some left over. From here, you get to dress it with all the fun. So we've got our onions, we've got our cilantro. I think the, may the spicy mayo goes really well next. So I'm just gonna take my spoon and just sprinkle it like this, all over the top. 
If you have a little extra, so if you wanna put your greens on top and then more spicy mayo, you can. So we're gonna do some green onion. The colors on this are just fabulous and the flavor that it adds is awesome. We're gonna take some toasted sesame seed, toss those on there, and then just a little teeny bit of cilantro. There you have it. Spicy pork kimchi fries. Here we go, y'all. Finished product. Tell me that doesn't look absolutely beautiful. It's the best part. I get to taste it. Get a bite with all the goodness, some fries, some kimchi, a piece of pork, some spicy mayo. Mmm. Y'all. That's so good. You get the sweet from the pork, the spicy from the sriracha mayo, and the sour from the kimchi. So it's just such a delicious, balanced flavor all on top of those fries. And it adds just the perfect palate. It is so good. I hope you guys give this a shot. Don't be scared. You can adjust the spice level if you're not a spicy person. So. If you try it, please make sure you tag me over on Instagram with a photo. I wanna see. You can also leave me a comment here down below if you tried it or if you've been to Cilantro in Austin. Also, check the description for a link to my website. That's where you'll find the full recipe, all the steps, everything you need to know to make this yourself at home. So I hope you guys love this as much as I do. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.